guys, it's me, Brandon, and today I want to tell you the Bible story of when the Gibeonites deceived Joshua. We can find the story in Joshua chapter 9, verse 1 to 27. Let's hear it. After the Israelites took the city of Ai, word quickly spread of the victory. The kings of the Hittites, Hamalites, Canaanites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Elisites began planning how they could combine the armies to do battle with the Israelites. In the city of Gibeon and the nearby towns of Kephalah, Beeloth, and Kirat Jehawim, the people met in fear wondering what to do. They knew God had told the Israelites not to make treaties with anyone in Canaan, but destroy all those living in the land because of their wickedness. Instead of joining those gathering to fight the Israelites, the Gibeonites came up with a devious plan to save their lives. Gibeon was only a three-day walk from the Israelite base at Gilgal. The people of Gideon and the nearby towns were Hivites. A group of ambassadors were chosen. They welded their donkeys with lettered saddlebags and old patched wineskins. They put on worn-out patched sandals and ragged quilts, and the bread they took with them was dry and moldy. When they arrived at the Israelite camp at Gilgal, they told Joshua and the men of Israel, We have come from a distant land to ask you to make a peace treaty with us. How do we know you don't live nearby? Joshua asked, For if you do, we cannot make a treaty with you. This bread was hot from the oven when we left our homes, they replied. But now it is dry and moldy. These wineskins were new when we filled them. But now they are old and spread open, and our clothing and sandals are worn out from our very long journey. Joshua and the Israelites examined their food, but did not ask God what to do. Joshua then made a peace treaty with them and guaranteed their safety. The leaders of the Israelites ratified their agreement with a binding oath. Three days after making the treaty, the Israelites learned that these people actually lived nearby. They sent men to investigate and reach the towns in three days. The people of Israel grumbled against the leaders because of the treaty. The leaders replied, Since we have sworn an oath in the presence of the Lord, we cannot touch the Gibeonites. Divine anger would come upon us if we broke our promise. Joshua called together the Gibeonites and asked, Why did you lie to us and say that you lived in a distant land when you lived right here among us? From now on, you will always be servants who cut wood and carry water for the house of my God. We did it because the Lord your God commanded Moses to give you this entire land and to destroy everyone in it. They replied, Now we are at your mercy to do to us whatever you think is right. Joshua did not allow the people of Israel to kill them. Instead, the Gibeonites became woodcutters and water carriers for the community of Israel and the altar of the world. In this story, we see how the Israelites did not consult with God before receiving the Gibeonites. The Gibeonites disguised themselves in order to deceive the Israelites, and they made a treaty that God didn't approve of. The Israelites ignored God's command and not making deals with the other inhabitants of Canaan. The Gibeonites deceived Joshua because Joshua didn't ask God for guidance. When God gives instructions, we must follow them. And we must always follow the Bible because it contains instructions that God has given us. We must consult everything with God in order to make good choices.